Okay, we're at module four. That's halfway through, crazy. Um, we've already gone through a little bit of like how to use um, Indeed to do some job searching, but I'm gonna go through from start to finish job searching, how it works, how you should um, be approaching it. And there's a couple activities for you to do in this one. So hopefully you won't get too bored. So we're gonna talk about what the jobs are, what is it that you are supposed to be looking for, where to find them, what words you should be searching for, a refresher on how to search on LinkedIn, Indeed, and Google. I will share some job boards with you, but there are lots of them out there. So, you know, find ones that work for you. How to specifically look for entry level positions. We'll talk a minute about mind mapping. It's not necessarily directly related to just this, but it might be a tool that if you're not used to it or haven't used it before, you might find interesting. We'll talk about a little bit how you can make your own work and then applying. Once you find something that you do like, <laughs> what should you do? So what are the jobs? You don't know what you don't know. So you, if you don't know what you're looking for, it's a little bit challenging. So your approach to it needs to be just exploring. That's what we've been encouraging guys to do this whole time is just get out there, look at job descriptions, see what's out there. Evaluate. So these are the three steps I recommend. Explore what's out there. Evaluate your skills and your interest and your fit for those positions and the company and then eliminate what doesn't. So you're gonna start very broad, looking at all kinds of things and then start evaluating what you think you like, what you think you don't like, what kinds of companies are good fits and not good fits, and then eliminate, stop looking for some of the things that you've determined aren't good for you. So remember this back from week one, <laughs> this was a list that Max shared with you, uh, relevant job titles and some other tech titles as well. These top ones are the most appropriate for the course that you're going through, which includes webmaster, full stack developer, backend developer, website developer, front end and web developer, user designer, application developer. I think you're also doing a security module. Um, so these are the types of jobs you could look at. That doesn't mean you couldn't get a job with any of the other ones. These are just the most highly um, alignable. And then I kind of penciled in some expected salaries. It's you know, a range obviously and depends on the company and all that. So um, they're all typically, aside webmaster, which is more general, they're all kind of in the same sort of tech boat. But you may be taking less than that for your first job. You may be working part time. You might be, you know, donating some time for free just to get your foot in the door for that first level real job. So where do you start exploring? So there are, jobs are everywhere, right? So you need to be thinking about they're on Indeed, like we've already talked about. Google, you can just, you don't even have to go to a job board. So Indeed and Google are search engines. They're not job boards. So a search engine is a place where they have bot crawlers that go out and search, look for where jobs have been posted and pull them in. So yes, people can post jobs to Indeed, but they're also going out as a search engine looking for websites that have posted jobs. Google, that's all they're doing is going out and looking for that. You can look in local ads, Syracuse.com. I actually looked today has tons of tech jobs listed. So you can be looking locally too. Might not be the same as picking up a paper, but you can go online and look at local ads. There's a whole bunch of different um, local magazines. So you might wanna check and see which ones have job listings. Referrals, obviously great place. Those tech job boards. Um, a popular one is Dice. Another one is right there with what you're already using, GitHub. And then what words are we going to search for? So this is the part where it's like, I don't know what to put in. So start with that list that we had at the top, but remember you're not just looking for titles. So this is from an article in Skill Crush that I shared in the Slack channel, career, uh, career coaching channel last week or earlier this week. Um, you're not just searching job titles. The searches that you put in, like Indeed, it will search all through the description. So you can look you can look for things beyond just like, what title should I be looking for? And some of the companies are super creative. You know, if you look on LinkedIn, people have like chief, uh, chief officer of fun. And <laughs> those aren't, those aren't, um, I think a recent one I just saw was chief operator of happiness or something like that, or a happiness engineer, I think Google has. So if, you're not going to find full stack developer if you underneath that specific Google department, they're looking for happiness engineers. So you wanna be putting in other things that will help you have happiness engineer land in your search results. 
Um, as far as looking for entry level, you can use the words junior and entry level and look for those, but that term is subjective. Sometimes, especially when the search engines are going out and crawling and pulling stuff in, they're not, um, there's no hard and fast rule. There's no thing that says this many years, this many months, this, this type of work is entry level. So you may be, if you're only looking for those things, you might be missing out because people might just be putting web developer and they might be looking for someone with five years of experience, but they might be willing to take a hard learning person with less experience. So you can search those with a grain of salt. Um, you can start adding in the skills that you have, start adding the languages that you're learning, add those things into your search results so that you're seeing jobs that come up with that. And again, not just titles. And then you can start looking for industries if you want to narrow it down to health industry or marketing or whatever, you know, if you have a cert, something from your background or something that you're interested in, you can put in different industries to kind of just see. And, you know, again, we're exploring and learning. How does that change my results if I put in something? more specific. You can start using locations. You can try something um, specific to Syracuse with a close range, or you can do remote. And then you can also start typing in your values. And again, just see how it changes your search results. So if you put in diversity, because you want to work in a company that has a diverse culture, see what comes up. I personally would want to work at companies that have diversity and inclusion written into their job description. So hopefully that would help you narrow the search to companies that you're more interested in. Um, if you need, if you want something that's family oriented, like put those values into your search um, search parameters too, and see how that changes the things that come up in your, your list. So again, as I said, you wanna start really broad, trying to see all the different things that are out there and then narrow it in. So I recommend usually that people look at a whole bunch of different job boards and kind of just see which ones you like. Do they have, easy tools? Are they free? Do you Are you getting the same exact results that you get in Indeed? Because Indeed may be crawling that site and there's no reason to do Indeed and a job board if they all land on Indeed anyway. Um, you can search for like keywords. So go in Google and say, looking for web developer and see what similar terms it suggests for you, which means ask Google. <laughs> and then um, use a variety of search options again so try try google try linkedin we're going to do that tonight so um you don't have to put time to decide to do this because we're going to do it now and um, what i recommend for a mix is to have like linkedin and indeed as your as definitely go to search engines but i'm gonna we're gonna go through three today you can pick out which ones you want to use if you only want to use indeed that's fine um but no more than three job boards the job boards have much narrower lists they don't change as often and um, when you have limited time, I personally think you're better off going into a large job board and narrowing it down than going into a narrow one and keep hoping that something shows up there. Tell everybody that you're looking for a job. You would no idea if your neighbor might know someone or has a cousin or uncle or someone who just started a company and they need a developer. Um, it, this happens all the time. I just hired a girl to work for me in my, my environmental career coaching. And she's like, oh, I got offered a job, but it's like her uncle's company. And <laughs> so she's moving right into sustainability where uh, other people are fist fighting to try to get those positions. But because she knows, you know, she's family, she's getting the job. So unless you're afraid of it or have a moral, um, opposition to it, go ahead and share it on social. Tell people on LinkedIn, tell people on your social media that you are looking or that you're in careers in code and contact local companies. If you know that you are really interested in TGC player, you're a gamer, you love that kind of thing. You play D and D on the weekends, tell them <laughs> I play D and D I'm in careers in code. I want to work here. Tell me how you might not get a job tomorrow, but maybe next year, um, you know, maybe you work something part time in a while and they'll come back to you and, and you start there next year after you've got experience. So the third step is evaluating those jobs. Once you have an idea where to find them, you start looking at things and you're starting to get an idea of what they're looking for. You need to be determining what you want to apply for. So are you applying to work at a tech company just because it's a tech company? Do you want to do meaningful work? So would you be looking for something more with a nonprofit or a mission with a heart? Like, what do you want to get out of your work? Um, maybe you just want to work at a techie place because it's fun. That's fine. But that would be a, 
you know, different set of results for one person than another. Do you want to do something creative? If so, then you need to be looking in marketing or, or a company that has a creative culture. Then you're also looking at your skills and your background. So, um, you know, all of you are looking for different subsets of different work. So it's not like you'll all be competing for the exact same jobs. Um, each one of you has a different thing that's important to you and what you want to be looking for. Um, you will have some of the same, same skills, obviously, coming from careers in code, but your backgrounds all have different um, personality styles and soft skills and things that you bring to the table. What is it that you just really enjoy doing? Lots of people like to write. Other people like to design things. Other people like to sit and do n numbers. So what kind of, a, of those skills do you like to do? And hopefully programming is going to be one of those also. And then lastly, what benefits do you want to have? It is perfectly fine and valid and a very good idea to think about whether you need healthcare, whether you want to have days off, whether you want to be able to travel and be able to use that as to say, I want to work at this company. Even if you get all the way through the interview process and they offer you the job for you to be able to say, I'm sorry, but you don't offer the benefits that I want or need to live the lifestyle that I want. So it's better to think about that stuff now so you can search the job descriptions for them. You can ask people when you have conversations about those companies to find out what it's like to work there if they have those benefits. So that's a working with the end in mind kind of a thing. You want to be thinking ahead about the type because you, you want to be in a position where you are not just begging for a job, but you are interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. So what I want you to do right now is to write these things down. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds, and I just want you to write without thinking every single thing that you can think of right now, what's important to you and what do you want? Write it down. Every I don't care if it's a car, a boat, a house, a new dog, start writing. <laughs> I'll give you a minute on this one because I kind of popped it on you. But no thinking about whether you can get it or can't get it or whatever. Just write down what you want and what's important to you. Okay, stop. So you can build on this later. I just wanted you to kind of get some brain barf, barf out there on paper and um, let you get started about it. It's an interesting exercise to think about what you want without any blocks to it and just throw it out there and see what happens. Oh, I got ahead of myself. So I had directions here. <laughs> um, let's do it again for 30 seconds because I kind of changed it on you. List the types of work that you think you might like. I'll give you 30 seconds. Even if you don't know how you would do it, where it is, just what kind of stuff do you think you would like to do? Okay, stop. Okay, the second one is what skills do you have? So take a breath. Okay, start writing them down. What skills do you have? No thinking how much you have, how much, how little, how much, who cares? Just start writing down all the skills you have. The gift of gab, writing, dancing. Okay, next question. What is it that you really enjoy doing? No thinking, just writing. What stuff do you love to do? Go. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's work related, just write down stuff you like to do. Okay, take a breather. Last one. What benefits would you like to have? Child care, health care, days off, casual Fridays, anything you can think of. Work from home days. Five seconds. Okay, stop. Okay, so those are just starting points for you to be thinking about when you start to list your skills on your resume and you start all the imposter syndrome creeps up check the list that you wrote maybe there's stuff there that you are not giving yourself enough credit for um, when you're looking at job descriptions do they have the benefits that you listed down maybe you've been unrealistic but maybe at some point um, the first job you take doesn't have some of those things that you want but maybe your second third job does or maybe when they offer you the job for not as much money as you want you can say well in exchange for one of these other benefits that you want i will work for you but i'm gonna take the pay cut in exchange so um it's just a little bit of self-awareness as you go through the job search 
because now we're going to talk about how to eliminate jobs. You've gone broad. You've been looking at stuff. Um, you've been looking at generic terms like these. So start eliminating words. Um, <clears throat> you can take out, if you know you don't want part-time, take that out of your search. I showed you on Indeed how to do the advanced search and how to remove words. So take out part-time um, or just use the filters. If you if the if manufacturing keeps coming up and you're like I don't I'm not interested in that eliminate that from your search, and then you can start adding more specific words. I I've realized that what I want is to do meaningful work, so I'm going to put nonprofit into my search, or at least do a, a round or a saved search around nonprofits, or um, maybe I find out the skills that I just threw out there. I'm really good at project management, so now maybe I'm thinking. Maybe I should try to get a job where I am, all, where I could also do some project management work. Um, maybe I also love one of the things I wrote down that I'm really good at that I love is user design or, you know, creating and, and doing um, colors and design work instead of just coding. So um, when you're starting to get more narrow in your search and you know that you've um, been finding some things that you're interested in, you can start adding more specific things to, to narrow it down. And then you can also eliminate by, you know, if you determine I've been looking at this job board for three weeks and nothing has come up that I feel like I would want to apply for, stop looking at it. <laughs> um, so we're going to go over LinkedIn, Google, and Indeed again, but this time, instead of me showing you, I'm going to um, stop and let you go play for a few minutes, and then we'll talk about what questions you had or, you know, um, what you think of those job search engines. And then you'll save each one of those. So you can sort of look and compare for yourself how they're different. Um, you might find that you love the interface of Google and that's just where you're gonna play. Um, you might prefer LinkedIn. It has some really neat different tools that the other ones don't have. And maybe you'll just spend 80% of your job search time there. So um, again, instead of you guys having to make time to go do this, we'll do it here right now so that you can get this out of the way. And when you leave here, hopefully you're one step further to getting into the research and starting to apply for stuff. So the cool thing about LinkedIn is that it is a hybrid job board and a search engine. So people obviously post jobs there and it also searches for jobs. That's free. You have the added benefit that the other ones don't have of being connected to people and to be able to follow the jobs right into your news feed. So there's a connectivity that the other ones don't have. It, it'll show you what alumni are, are working for the jobs you're looking at. Um, you then have the also the benefit of showcasing yourself when you're contacting with people. You can upload a general resume here. So you'll see, again, this is one of the areas where there's some people who say do it, some people who say don't do it. Um, the people who say don't do it is because you might show a resume that somebody looks at and they don't want to hire you because you haven't tailored it to the job. I'm pretty sure that everyone knows that the job that you posted isn't specific to them because hello, it's on a, <laughs> a posted board. So I don't, I don't think that that's the case. So, um, I think in the position that you're in, if you're comfortable sharing your resume, that it's a good idea to put it, to post it up to the job board. Um, seeking opportunities is a thing that um, LinkedIn started to supposedly help recruiters find you. It kind of works counterintuitively though. It looks like you're just sitting back waiting for to get hired. So most people, most career experts recommend not putting open to work in your picture or in your headline because it, again, um, counter to what it's supposed to do, it takes away all those spaces out of your headline where there should be keywords for recruiters to find. So <laughs> it's, I don't think it works the way that it's supposed to. So um, make sure you're using your headline with actual words that could help you get found. The other thing is a lot of recruiters are also looking for um, more advanced positions because they get paid more commission. So I, that doesn't mean there aren't any recruiters who are out there looking, especially on LinkedIn, they'll be looking, if they're looking to hire, an entry-level position, they will be looking for entry-level people. But um, recruiters that work, headhunters that work on their own outside of companies, they're usually looking for higher dollar tickets. Um, and you can also see some salary research and stuff in LinkedIn. So what we're gonna do right now is give you guys a couple of minutes to go on LinkedIn, go to the jobs tab, 
and then take a look at the different tools and stuff that they have right there on that page. Um, I will stop sharing and do this with you after I've gone through it. Then you're going to enter some search terms, just test out the job search function on link on LinkedIn. And then once you get there, you'll re review some of the different options that they have there because they've got options at the front. Then once you start searching, there's some other options. You can hide jobs, save jobs, um, hiding, you can hide like companies that you're not interested in. in. Um, I think that will help refine what it shows you in the recommended list. You can start following companies. So you're like, oh, cool. I like this job. I'm going to start following that company right from there. And then there's additional filters that you can use. So what I want you to do is to open a tab with LinkedIn, do this search, uh, play around with it a little bit, and then keep it open so that when you do the next one for Google, you can have that open next to it and you can kind of compare how they look different. So yeah, jobs is up here in the middle. And then the your saved jobs are there. The jobs alerts are there. You can look at salary stuff here. Here's where it'll allow you to do some skill assessments. I think there's more than what's all here. Yeah, these are just ones that are recommended for, for me based on what's on my profile. And um, these are the ones it's recommended to me because of the stuff that I have on my profile and my saved previous searches. So you can go, um, which is different than looking at your job alerts. If you did full stack developer, here and then um it didn't let me change the location but once you get here then it gives you all these additional filters and things that you can do so again you can look at the i only want to see these levels but don't forget that sometimes something might fall in the other cracks but this is still a good place to start um then i can say i want it to be remote and I'm still getting almost 4,000 results. So that's where I can start adding in values or adding in different skills that I have from the past and just sort of try to narrow it down. Um, but if I looked, now that I have stuff pulled up, if I say, okay, um, let's see, morning brew, that sounds kind of cool. What is that? Um, I'm gonna, just like you guys have been taught, go through and look for where they have values that resonate with you, where are your skills, where are your, your gaps that you have. Um, but they will also show you like where it is, um, you know, full time. And then you can all go all the way down to the bottom. And if I decide that I wanna see more jobs from this company, then you can just click following, follow. I guess I am following them somehow, <laughs> but you can um, click on that. So that is what LinkedIn looks like. Any questions about that? Okay, if not, we're going to go ahead and talk about using Indeed, which I've shown you before. Um, I'm just going to leave this small. <laughs> so um, it is the largest job search engine. So I, I still recommend people do some searching on LinkedIn. However, you know, again, when we see how these are working, it's up to you if you want to use it. Uh, it is free. You can upload your resume there. They do have recruiters searching on LinkedIn and they have the advanced search tool and then the save searches. It's not really as slick as LinkedIn, but I think you'll find LinkedIn. I, what I really like too is that you just might see stuff on LinkedIn that doesn't actually make it to Indeed because you might, once you start following the companies, they sometimes post jobs without ever putting it on a job board. And Indeed isn't gonna have that connectivity that you have with people on LinkedIn, which I did not. So you could see, um, like right here, one alumni works here. So that it will show you if you have alumni, or so that's, a great way to have an instant connection somewhere. So it tells you um, which companies have someone that you could connect with there. So next I'm gonna have you go to Indeed and do the same thing. So open a new tab and then start a search and then go up to, so we're gonna do, I'll do the same thing, full stack developer. 
next time we'll say Syracuse. I'm going to continue as me. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, and then when you were first here, the advanced search doesn't show up. So hit find jobs and then magically the advanced search shows up there. So from here, you now have these different options, very similar to LinkedIn. And then you can set up job alerts right underneath there. So you don't really want to do that until you get it refined to where you want it. Okay, so we'll leave that one open too. So you'll have your LinkedIn interface and the Indeed one. And then the next one we will do just Google. So open a tab. Um, the good thing about Google is it is also obviously a very gigantic search engine. Um, it is free. I put a lot of trust into Google and their products. So um, whereas Indeed, maybe I don't trust so much. They also have advanced search options. And because of Google having access to what it has, you can get um, additional salary info as well. So we're going to do the same thing. Open a tab in Google and just do some testing. So you just go to regular old Google. And when you type a job into here, it just knows that you're looking for jobs. So you don't have to go to anything special. Um, ads are gonna pop up first and then um, jobs will list underneath it. So they've got the filters at the top you can save searches and you can set up alerts. Let's see, what is this? Mm, I don't know. Um, it already knows that I'm in Syracuse. If you click on it, it will take you into a larger interface where you can have um, more filters. And here is where, look, this is the power of Google. It is telling you ask Google the other types of search names you can search for. So this is very helpful to say that I'm looking for, um, I don't want this. I don't want this. I'll take associate. I'll take web designer. I'll take marketing. And then you just play with it and figure out, um, sorry, this is another tool that I have. And, um, Here's that same company. So it's the same one. See, you'll see the different search engines come up with the same stuff, but it's more down to which interface do you like better <laughs> because they, they do the same things. Um, and you will come across, that's why I say to use one or two of the big ones and a couple of the small ones, but you're going to um, be, once you, especially once you start narrowing in what you want, you'll probably see the same jobs. Um, but this one says it was just posted. So um that might not even be posted. That might just be when Google pulled it. I don't know. Um, so there, this is where they have the, the other access to other information being Google. So you can see right there what their Glassdoor um, information says in ZipRecruiter about salaries. There's a, quite a bit of discrepancy between these two, but the web developer is usually less. And you can see more about the company go right to their website um, and then, you know, set up job alerts, just like the other ones. So set up a couple of alerts on LinkedIn and Google or indeed, whichever ones you prefer. Any questions about those or the differences between them? Does anyone already feel like they have a preference? Indeed and LinkedIn. LinkedIn and Google. Yeah, I like the interface of Google better than Indeed, but um, I have trained myself to use Indeed. But yeah, just play around with them now that you kind of have an idea what they what they do and what the differences are. And if you get the feel for one, you know, just start using that one. Okay, and lastly, there are the job boards. So Dice is a very big popular one. Muse is, is a 
career source, but they also have a blog and other things, but they list a lot of best companies to work for. So it's still a great place to follow because they'll send you articles and things about um, sometimes like the fastest growing companies that are hiring or the best tech companies to work for. So they're a good one just to watch. Um, some of the other ones I researched, I don't really know a lot about, but um, Underdog IO specializes in startups. Um, there are remote job boards specifically, one is Power to Fly and Flex Jobs. There are some that are just for women. So there's Tech Ladies. There's another one called Fairy God Boss, which is more just women empowerment, but there are some tech jobs there. And then Angel's List, Angel List is uh, specific to nonprofits. So that's where I say pick two or three job boards and pick just pick one or two that fits with the kind of job or work that you think you're looking for. Um, so I did want you to just to do this while we're here, because again, I don't, I just don't want to send you off and then you never get back to this. So while we're here, go ahead and open a job board. I think they're supposed to, yeah, here, I was listing, <laughs> listing these. Um, just pick one of these, go to it, and then just kind of see how it looks different than the search engines we just did. Okay, let's talk about how to search for entry level specific. You already saw that there were filters, but we're talking about what else you can do. Read articles um, about how to find entry level jobs. There'll be little tidbits in there. I've shared a couple. I'm going to keep trying to share some things like that. Again, search startups. Um, another article that I read, why I'm suggesting reading articles about finding entry level jobs, sometimes they list them. Um, but one of the articles I read said to keep an eye on uh, venture capitalists and look for companies that are recently funded a lot of money, because that means they're going to be like that revature and hiring 300 plus people um, if they suddenly got $2 billion to run their startup. So startups are tricky because um, there's no guarantee that, you know, they're going to last, but they usually are pretty flexible and they're going to be a, a fun kind of environment, but they also might be very... Um, challenging they might have long hours and stuff so there's different things thanks kyle so she said uh you can do flex jobs without registering utilize your network again keep trying to have those conversations with people and let people know that you're looking because they will help you get your foot in the door follow companies reach out to them now we get a little bit more extreme in these last suggestions but offer to volunteer um even just putting out the gesture to say, I will work here for two weeks just to see how it goes for free might be enough to let them say, you don't need to do that. Let's just start and we'll pay you like, um, or they might take you up on volunteering and you get a chance to see if you like it or don't like it. Um, but there are definitely people who have volunteered to work at a place and have gotten a job doing that. Cause once they like you, they'll find a place like they'll, um, if they're going to let you come and volunteer and they like you, they're going to do their best to try to keep you or find you a job somewhere else, which is also helpful. Keep building your portfolio because that's going to keep introducing you to new people. And um, and you can volunteer, do, volunteer to do something at your church, at a community center, at, you know, your aunt or uncle's business, like do something where you can help someone else and keep adding to your portfolio after your capstones, probably. <laughs> and then... Um, keep showing off your experience on social media. So I definitely recommend that you guys are tweeting or posting on LinkedIn and telling people that you're doing careers in code, how it's going, keep reminding them that you're doing this and that you're making progress. And, um, you know, the, they may not have thought of you two weeks ago, but then you post something and they just talk to somebody and, you know, you just, you got to align the timing with those connections. Does any, has anyone done a mind map before? Okay, I'll share some more information. I just have the one slide here. Um, mind maps are a really cool way to pull ideas out of your head and brainstorm. And um, so if you're trying to think about your career path and what you want to search for and what those questions I asked you before, what, <laughs> what do you want most and that sort of thing. Um, this picture is just one little stretch of this. But you basically start at, I'm, I'm exploring my career, and you can do this for any topic. I'm exploring my career. What's my plan? Well, I'm going to do this. I don't love the way these drawings are, actually, but um, they're cute. <laughs> um, part of this person's plan is monitoring, and part of it is reviewing. So part of your plan is research, and then networking is another part of your plan. So you keep working down the branches. So if networking, you could have 
LinkedIn networking and you have in-person networking and in-person can branch off to um, organizations or meetups. And so you keep kind of branching off your ideas and it's just, it's a creative way to spark your ideas and, and to lead you down a path from one way to another thing. Um, you can have another branch for the job search essentials, your to-do list essentially for, I need to do my resume. I need to um, write this piece of it. I need to have it reviewed. Um, you can do personal professional development. So you can have another branch that goes off into what do I need to learn besides coding? And uh, you can do this on paper, in a spreadsheet, whatever, but a mind map, some people just, their mind really relates to it. And if you're a creative person who likes to draw and doodle, it can also be very fun. Um, so I will share more information about that. I think even, even when you're on a job, I've done mind maps um, in my last career. And even for the work that I do now, when I have a project idea and I wanna think about all the parts that I need to do it. So it's also sort of a, a creative project management tool. So even for your capstone, this actually, it, might work well for your capstone. So you have your idea and then you know you need to figure out the programming piece. You know you need to figure out the design piece. You know you need to figure out, um, or maybe there's a research piece and you can pull off little arms for all of those and start of mind map, you know, all your ideas underneath each one. So um, I will share more information about that. Okay, we're getting towards the end. So making your own work, you can, you could freelance. Again, you're probably not gonna start doing this now, but just if you start to get towards the end of the program and you're like, ah, I haven't got hired anywhere, you can start thinking about some other things that you could do to keep your experience going. And um, freelancing, you're probably not gonna go out and start building apps for people, but you could just do wireframes. Like there are, there are um, people who might just need help designing their website and maybe you just get paid to do that repeatedly. Um, so that's one thing you could do where you can um, do freelance work is on a website called Free, uh, Freelancer, Fiverr, Upwork. These are some popular ones. You can um, search for contract work in the job board. So instead of thinking I'm going to, I'm looking for a full-time job or something that's going to be permanent, maybe you just look for a contract work. Sometimes you get an advantage on that because most people are looking for part-time and full-time work. There's not a lot of people who want to have contract work where they know it's going to end at some point. So there might be less competition for those. You could start your own business. You can just say, I'm so-and-so and this is the work that I do. And again, instead of just volunteering to do work for your church or the community or whatever, you can get paid to do those work, those jobs. And then once you're ready to, sub well, first of all, any questions about the make your own work path? I'm mostly just showing it, throwing it out there to you as an option and something, especially if you are very good at working on your own and taking charge of things that it's an option that you could do. Once you are ready to submit. So at this point, you should have been looking at some job descriptions and sort of started the research. I know some of you are in different parts of the process. That's fine. We are about halfway done with the program, which means if we were doing the 100 right now, you should be at 50. But I don't think in hindsight, when we started that, that we were thinking about, you know, the way that this would progress. I think it's perfectly fine that you guys are at where you're at. Um, you're now more in a, in a better space to understand what the work is. Um, you're in a better space to work on all of this stuff all at the same time. And um, now you've got the tools to go searching. So now you should be looking at, okay, I'm gonna start doing the research and I'm gonna start thinking about stuff to apply for. And um, so when you are ready to submit something, so let's say, you're doing the, the research and something pops up and you're like, this is really cool. And I, I really encourage you, even if you think you're not qualified yet, if you really like it and you think you could be qualified or even close to it, just apply. It's good practice. And you never know, they might have been looking, like the job that you said, Susan was open forever. They might've been looking and looking and looking and can't find anyone. And they're just ready for someone who, who could step in and fill the position. Um, that definitely happens, especially in tech where it's so hard to find people. But just make sure that you have read the descriptions and instructions thoroughly. It's more and more common, common, I've mentioned this before, for them to start popping in words like use the word rainbow in your cover letter, just because they, that's a screening tool to make sure that 
everyone read it. <laughs> and if you don't use the word rainbow, that's a whole bunch that they don't even have to look at. Make sure that you, again, follow the instructions. If it says submit a cover letter, if it says it should be PDF, whatever the instructions say, make sure you do it. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone through hiring and it says to submit like one complete PDF and people will mail in or send in five individual pieces. And you're like, why would I hire you if you can't follow one simple instruction? So it's, um, I think people think it doesn't matter, but it does matter. Uh, same with spelling and grammar. Check it over yourself a hundred times, use Grammarly and ask someone else to look at it too. And then I know I've been hounding you guys on this, but I can't say it enough. Network, talk to people who work in the companies. Um, you don't have to be hire talking to the hiring manager. You can talk to whoops, an HR person, find out what the rules are, if, the, if it's still open, if another job, like, like you could even tell them I'm in careers and code, I'm not quite ready. Do you think another job like this will come available in another year or six months? And because um, I just want to see if I should bother applying now. Maybe it's maybe if they know another position will open in six months, then you just wait for the next one. Um, but it's a good excuse for you to contact them because they'll start to get your, to know your name. And then the next time you apply, they're like, oh, we're familiar with this person. Make sure you're tracking your submittals. So we've been wanting to track the job search descriptions in this in the shared spreadsheet. And I know that's challenging because it's kind of like busy work, but it is meant to help you to keep track of what you're liking and not liking and all of that. But so um, if you even if you don't track the ones you're just reviewing there, make sure you are tracking the ones you apply for. You need to know who you who's responded to you, when you need to follow up. So that information is critical for yourself and for the careers in code because they want to know where you're applying also. Then make sure you're following up. So you can follow up a week later, maybe two weeks later, and then you can follow up from there. If they don't hear, if you don't hear back, that's not a no. That doesn't mean don't contact them again. It means you're going to follow up again um, because you might think you're bothered. You're not going to to unless you're like calling them every day or um, you know being too harassing. You're not. You either have a shot at the job or you don't. You're not going to get kicked out of the the list because you have followed up too much. Like you showed too much interest. That's there. That will be the opposite. Is there some kind of like best practice? Would you say like I've heard? You know, I mean, years ago it was like handwrite a card, and now I'm wondering if there's some specific way or like you know you said phone but is email okay or yeah so um a week later i i think a week is too fast i think most companies are not hiring that quickly so um i think two weeks two weeks is completely reasonable um and you might wait until the close date so um if the position just opened I wouldn't reach out to them a week later and say, hey, what's going on with my resume? <laughs> because they're still collecting them. So that's another reason to track in the spreadsheet. Um, I don't even think that column's in there, but maybe it should be. Um, tracking the date when it's when the, the applications close. So then you know when your first follow-up should be. Um, so note to self, <laughs> I'm gonna add that column. Um, that's continuous improvement. But what should be, should it be email yeah. or? So um, personally, um, two weeks later, or if you know the close date between a week and two weeks, I would email. And if you don't get a response, then I would call. And then if you want to stand out and it's a company you really want, I wouldn't do this for all of them, but if it is a company that you really want to work for and you think you have a shot, go ahead and send in a handwritten note. like. That's, that is a good way. It is something people used to do regularly, but they don't anymore. Um, the, I think I've said this before, but the hiring managers are looking for a reason to pick you. So you want to give them reasons. Uh, like the girl that I just hired, I had 40 people apply and she was one person who sent me an email to follow up. I didn't interview a single other person. <laughs> I just, I, I interviewed her. She was awesome. She was it. So um, all those other people completely missed their chance to even have an interview with me because they didn't even follow up. So um, don't think that everyone else is doing it. It's very simple, but people are just not doing it. Everyone's hiding behind the whole digital space and just, you know, throwing it in there and waiting. And um, if you're the one who's calling and expressing interest and, and getting in front of them, 
they're going to appreciate that because you'll save them having to look at everybody else. So um, the other ways to stand out is to have your personalized website and portfolio. So another thing that you can do is um, when you have when you're building your you page for your portfolio and your experience, you could also make a duplicate copy that says uh, has the company's name and says, thank you for looking at my page. And so that when they get there, they get like a personalized message that doesn't take very long to do something like that. And no one else will be doing that. Um, and then just show that you did your research. So when you are um, contacting them, or even if you send a thank you note, you know, you could talk about something that they just got awarded for in the news or whatever. They're also looking for that sort of thing. You can definitely cover that in your cover letter. Um, another way to stand out is just to show that you did your homework because that's another thing nobody does. They apply to stuff and they haven't bothered even looking at what the company does. So if you can show them, I looked at you, I know what you do, I want to work here, that's, that's already putting yourself ahead of other people. Um, and like I already mentioned, a great way to stand out is to say, I'm willing to give this a try for free. <laughs> and just like, just having said that might put yourself ahead of every other person because no one else is going to offer that either. Um, the girl that I just hired, the same one I just mentioned, she's the only one who reached out and she said, I will offer to do a week's free trial. Um, and of course I did not do a free trial with her. I just hired her and started paying her. So, um, You'd obviously would have to be willing to make do on it, make good on it, but um, it could be a good way to be willing, but just get creative. You don't have to do um, another article I was reading and what Max is always saying is that, you know, tech companies are started by people who cannot make it in the conventional world. They're weird people. <laughs> they like weird, they like individuals with thinking brains who can think for themselves. And so you wanna be able to show that. So don't, you don't wanna be, um, crazy but you don't want to have to be trying to fit in a cog in a wheel um last notes avoid putting a required salary so if it says you know what what amount of money do you want or whatever if you can put nothing put nothing and if you can put negotiable put negotiable because you don't want to paint yourself into a box there because that's just a mind you know read your mind thing um like i said research the company before you apply set a goal for yourself we've been talking about this with micro actions and whatever but if you wanted to reach the 100 by the end now that we're halfway through you'd have to do about eight applications a week to get there so um i don't think we're necessarily holding people to that anymore but it's still a good goal so um if you want to hold yourself to it that would be where you're at right now um putting that time aside like we've, we've been talking about and then, like I said, apply to stuff that you kind of like, but you're not 100% about, um, or, you know, the best case scenario is that they invite you to interview, they offer you the job and you're like, meh, I don't really want it. <laughs> you don't have to take it. Um, but it's a great confidence booster when they offer you, um, even if they invite you to interview and you say no, I mean, huge confidence booster. So go ahead and apply to things that'll help you be more confident. And then when you do get in the one that you really, really want, you'll, you'll be um, less nervous. And like I said, if you really want to work somewhere, just start talking to them, start building a relationship with them. Now you might even just ask them, um, you know, you can talk to people who work there. What's the culture like, how much, you know, you can ask them how much they get paid, but, um, what's the culture like, what kind of benefits do you have? How long do you think you'll stay here? Like, are there, you know, did you get help? Will I get help? Like all those questions that you might have start asking and then call the HR person or an internal recruiter and just say, I want to work here. Will you hold on to my resume? They might say no, but they might say yes. So finally, we want you to be working on the micro actions. So um, a mind map could be a micro action. Again, I'll send more information on that. Doing the job search research, applying would be a huge micro action. <laughs> then um, reading articles, start making connections and be bold and be yourself is like the best thing that you can do. So that's it. You guys know who I am and where to find me.